Hello, everyone. Welcome to Monday Live with Alan and Greg and our guest, Aaron Facer from Wales. Mm -hmm. Say hello, everyone. And how's everyone doing today? Great, doing great. Pretty well, yeah. It's a clip. It's eclipse day here in uh, America. Mm. You know the eclipse it is eclipse day, on. but I'm going to show you what the eclipse like is um, here in Virginia. Uh -huh. You get. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it didn't come either. It's not much of an eclipse. It mm. got dark when I was on my sun deck a little. Going, oh, it looks kind of shady, and I said, oh, it's the eclipse starting. Mm. Yeah. But, I saw an eclipse in 2000, the last one in 2017, though, Aaron, uh, in Portland. Mm -hmm. It was really, really, really wild, really, really neat. Mm -hmm. yeah, it can be neat. If, yeah. if, if, you, if you're in the, the right location mm -hmm. and you have your glasses, like I, did, I didn't buy any special glasses, so yeah. I'm not going to go no. ruin my eyes to get a no. <laughs> price position. Yeah, it is. That'd be horrible. You have to learn Braille. Ooh, uh, I didn't say that. No. But anyway, yeah, seeing an eclipse uh, live is just uh, uh, just a trip. You know, it, it's all true. And then I was watching it on TV while I was painting today and talking uh, with some friends like in Indi Indianapolis. And um, they're all different. Like the colors are different slightly and... Uh, it's just uh, really amazing to me. I've always been into like space stuff and planets. Yeah. Anyway, so we have a few people <laughs> in the chat room. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have Gareth. Hello, Gareth. Hello, Gareth. We got book chat with Pat. Hello, hey, Pat. Hello, Pat. Oh, her nephew had just sent me pictures from Vermont. Total. Eclipse. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That'd be, that'd be so cool. Yeah. It got darker here and then colder, and I was able to see it with my special glasses where my nephew is. They had total darkness. Yeah, oh, wow. I was mentioning it. I was before the chat started that here in Virginia, I was I, I was on my sun deck. I just noticed it was getting kind of shady. I said, "Oh, the eclipse has started." Mm -hmm. and, um, the room, the house got a little darker, especially inside. We don't have the interior windows, but I actually think it's getting out of the eclipse now and we never got real dark so mm. kind of a bust <laughs> that's all right all right so 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 Aaron um usually what we do the only the only thing that's really regular in the show is we ask about what books people have been reading mm. and if there's anything you re read now and um want to talk about just let us know and as a guest yeah. get first okay I am um... I'm working on four things sort of on and off at the moment. Uh, the main one, um, I think, yeah, Greg, you're reading this too, is yeah, Les Miserables. Um, so yeah, th this has been a lot of a lot of fun actually. It's yeah. a very very smooth read. Um, so it's not nearly as as daunting or as um, I don't know as as heavy as I was expecting it to be. Even though it's kind of emotionally heavy um but yeah I've been what, 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 what part are you at i have just finished i don't know I, i'm about 500 pages in this one. Oh, you're 500 all right you're a little ahead of me yeah i'm okay yeah i'm, I'm in part three no no sorry at the end of i've just finished part two and about to fit, start part three, which is called Marius. So I've just finished the Cosette oh. section, moving on to Marius. Now, can you compare that with your experience with War and Peace? Because I read that in the yeah. group with you. I think, I, I, I think this is, it's, it's much easier to get into it. Um, I think, yeah, what War and Peace doesn't really introduce you to as much as just kind of throws you into the deep end and right. sort of expects you to it's catch up and eventually ball. eventually yeah. you do catch up um whereas this it i think the characters are deep and very real but in a different way and i think hmm. 
I don't know. I think Victor Hugo is not necessarily more present as a writer, but maybe he's more helpful to you as the reader. Also, he's he's also very his characters are very idealistic. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're more like what he envisions people should be. Mm. And War and Peace, oh. Tolstoy is going. These are the people as they are, and yeah. you don't you don't. That's sort of my my. Mm. Because like oh, now we can talk different, huh? Yeah, like the bishop totally in the first yeah. part is like, I mean, he 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 was so idealistic that he's just essentially putting that character on a pedestal, yeah, and saying this is what we should be like, sort of like a a morality lesson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've That's never read it. <laughs> I haven't read it yet. It, it's 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 very good. I'm I'm I've just started the Waterloo section this morning. Okay, yeah. And um, I know we have a Voxer, and Sean was talking about he wants everyone to talk about the Waterloo section. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because um, in a way, it is very dense and dry, mm -hmm. especially compared to the rest of the book. Yeah. Which is very character driven, and you, this is very fact driven. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but I, I I didn't find it quite as bad as I was expecting because I've heard a lot of people really really didn't like it, whereas I, I didn't mind it too much, and it was quite interesting that because essentially it's almost like a um, almost like a bit of travel writing interspersed into the novel as well because he's talking as if he. The person telling you this story has just turned up at the battlefield of Waterloo and there's someone there telling him exactly what happened that day. Um, and so suddenly there's like this little travel writing piece inside the novel, which was I would not, enjoy not how I was expecting it to be there. Yeah. And I'm I'm forming my opinions on why that book that because that was what a question. Why did Hugo insert what is it, 50, 60 pages? Of mm. rather dense history, and I don't know if it cleans yeah. up a bit at the, the. I've only read about half of it, the Waterloo section. So yeah, and I think that there's a bit. I'm probably kind of paraphrasing, but he, he like says something like, he's essentially like using these these characters to tell a much bigger story about society and what humans are like, and so uh, when it's going into these sort of historical bits and these digressions, it's almost as if he's painting a picture of France as a whole and sort of getting to see how this event or this certain segment of society is so mm -hmm. important to the history and the culture. Um, and then you can kind of see the, the ripples and the after effects of that in, in the story as it sort of carries on. So yeah, it's been, it's been pretty cool. And, and the thing is like, I know Waterloo was a watershed moment in history. Mm. And he mentioned that, yeah. I mean, we can talk. I mean, it's not really that spoiler, but he mentioned like the rain. Yeah. Totally. If it had not rained the day before, history might be completely different. Mm. And that that that's sort of like the the small little things you don't think about. Mm. And I I don't know if I should, we can mention what I what I think he's going to do is that by introducing Waterloo as such. A climactically big event that changed. I think at the end of this book, and I, I don't know. I mean, I I've never read it. I think he's saying that we want a Waterloo moment. He's heading there. Yeah, maybe we need. Maybe I don't yeah. know. I mean, that's sort of like where I'm anticipating this is going to go. Is that mm. because it, it's so clear that Hugo is just impassioned about how badly the poor are treated. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I went to um, I went on holiday to, to Guernsey where he was um, in exile, where he lived um, in the Channel Islands, and um, that they were saying that he, I think it was maybe one day a week, um, he used to let all of the um, poor children um, from the streets around where he lived into his house, and he'd feed them all um, and things like that. So it seems like it wasn't just an ideal for him either. He was sort of quite active in trying to help people, um, which is nice to see, you know, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can definitely, I mean, I can just, you can just see his passion. 
that mm-hmm. he's uh, really concerned. So yeah. Anything else you've read recently you want to talk about other than war? Uh, so I'm. Yeah, the two of the main ones are. So I've also been reading uh, "Lives of the Poets." Oop, that way, there it is, uh, by Michael Schmidt, and it's just a history of poetry in English from medieval times up until like the 1990s when it was written. Um, so I'm with like the romantic poets at the moment. Okay. Uh, that's been that's been pretty cool, and I was really enjoying around sort of the 15 1600s and so i was thinking of reading like the fairy queen by um edmund spencer i read parts of that in university i I really like the parts i read in university and i i actually owned an edition Mm. that i was going to read right yeah eventually unhauled it and now i'm sad that i unhauled (laughs) yeah i i got a um spencer like a an ebook version of it from um yeah, for from from somewhere for free. It's free. It's but, public domain. Yeah, yeah. So, but then, yeah, I didn't end up reading it because I'm reading Lemmy's and Lives of the Poets, which are both mm. massive. And then the Fairy Queen is massive as well. Um, so I'm reading shorter poetry book at the moment. This is cool. Godfrey Ben. In I've not Pompeius. heard of that one of him before. No, he's not very well known in like the English speaking world. Um, I, I read the introduction today, and um, apparently in, in Germany he's sort of regarded as the most important poet in sort of in, in Germany since Rilke, or at least for okay, a certain so period he was. So poetry in translation. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. I like um, yeah, I like, yeah uh, so, I like the romantics. Oh, go ahead. Hmm. I'm sorry. There you go. Oh, no, I was just showing it just in case yeah. I didn't get it. Um, yeah, so it's like sort of early 20th century um, through to about the, I think he lived till just after the Second World War. Um, yeah, so it's pr- pretty interesting. And I think this was the, the first decent English translation. And I think p- part of the reason why he wasn't very widely read in, a, in English was because... Um, the first translation was really, really bad. Uh, whereas I think this one's from about the 80s and it's a little bit better. Um, but yeah. You know, it, it's curious because um, one of the books I just read for the book two pride, it's a novel kind of, kind of mm-hmm. one of those auto fiction novels, I think. Yeah. And they had a chapter talking about translating poets from foreign languages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, wait a second. Is this... Or was this in the Voxer group? It might have been our Voxer group, where someone was talking. Yeah, it was our Voxer group. Not there was a there was a bit of translation in the auto fiction, but I think the one I'm thinking mm. about, I think it's Ariane, she or not Ariane Fowler. Oh, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, so oh. Someone was talking about Pushkin. Uh, Pushkin, yes. And yeah. How fascinating it is how you translate poetry because you yeah. do you try to just say this is what the author said in English. Mm. Just sort yeah. of, or, or do you try to capture the the poetic spirit? Mm. And yeah. it can be vastly different. Yeah, mm. it can be it could, it could be very difficult, and like sometimes it's it's hard to tell whether they're capturing the poetic spirit of the original one, or whether they're trying to impose another kind of style on, onto the poetry, or even subconsciously doing that by maybe it had a certain rhyme scheme in its own language that doesn't really work in English. So they're going to try another rhyme scheme or another meter. Right. And it sort of changes it. It makes it feel clunky because it's, it's not quite the spirit of the original. I've sort of come across a few well, like it, that. If you know Dante, you know, he, the Italian, you know, yeah. he had three lines. They all rhymed. And it's like, so Rima. three Salima, but I've never seen an English translation that's tried that. I think a couple no, of translators say, yeah. you know, it, that really English, it really does not work in English at all. Mm. Right. Here's a, an attempt by Robert uh, Pinsky, kind of famous poet, American poet, that mm. did it in Italian and English, one-sided. We went through this with uh, Tom and L.A. books. 
Roz mm -hmm. was in the group a couple of years ago. God, mine's all annotated up. We really went through it. Um. So yeah, that that was cool. Mm -hmm. But I, <laughs> I I know Greg and I wish we uh, could speak and read another language. Yeah. Uh, do you, Aaron? Yeah. Not not properly. I I had to learn Welsh at school, so I went to a a uh, Welsh speaking school, and so. I did read and yeah, sort of speak Welsh at school. I can still speak Welsh and sort of read road signs and emails in Welsh, but I haven't read a book in Welsh since I was about 16, I don't think. So, um, yeah. But to your point, Greg, though, that, that is a good point. It is true. This is just like a exception that just came out pretty recently. I mean, uh, oh, well, my fault. <laughs> It came out in '94, so not real recently, but <laughs> at all. But anyway, all right. Yeah, I wish I knew Spanish at least or something. You know? I I can yeah. almost read a children's book in Spanish. Yeah, you know better mm -hmm. than me, but and but that was a few years ago. And I I just didn't try to keep it up, and I wish I did, but you know. But yeah, I lived in Arizona. I, my Sun Devil shirt. I I just got this today in the mail from. <laughs> from uh, uh, Toledo, Ohio, but anyway, with some other stuff in a box, you know, but um, yeah, you think living 20 some years in uh, Phoenix, I would have picked up on some Spanglish or I, I know like the bad words and I know how to, you know, swear in Spanish, but that's about it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah here's a, I'm just trying to catch up with some comments, you know, Pat was saying it got Darker and colder. She was with her glasses. People saying hi to each other. Here's Gareth. I'm getting a list together of my favorite short story collections. What mm. are yours? Ooh, Raymond Carver. Where am I calling from? Uh -huh. Never read any Raymond Carver. But I have read things. one or two short stories in college, but nothing stood oh, out to me. Yeah. Never a lot mm. of that. Who else? Now, do you now, Aaron? Do you have a favorite short story collection? That you, you... Um, it's quite it's quite hard to narrow it down. Really, I think uh, w w when I think of a short story collection, the, the first one that comes to mind is um, "A Good Man Is Hard to Find" by okay. Flannery O'Connor. Um, but I, I read that years ago, and I can only really remember the title story. Um, yeah, and then I always think of, of Borges as well. I was about to say, stories. Ficciones. Yeah. Now, the thing for me is, like, I tend not to like single author collections because mm. however good an author is, there's always going to be a dud or two yeah. in the collection. And what I'm doing now is my project, I'm just reading – short stories every week is I, I've selected mm. 20 different authors. So trying to pick the top story from 20 different authors, I think at least for me, yeah. I, I prefer it that way than trying to go through a whole collection. But yeah, it's hard for me to think of a dud story in Dubliners, but I'm just, I, I love that collection so much. Like my favorite mm. one isn't even the dead. It'd be Grace or, or Evelyn or two glance. Mm. I remember the 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 one the woman that was going was that Grace that she was getting she was a sort of a spinster. That's all oh, this. That oh, she, got, um, she was going to go off with her her bow, but she couldn't leave her father. Oh, that's Evelyn. Evelyn. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's a bad one. Paralysis. Yeah, mm. she's in love, but she can't leave for like Spain, I think. Cause and I her was father's in America, but I, I don't remember. Yeah, I can't remember either. You might be right. But uh yeah, good old Dubliners. Anything else mm -hmm. you, you're reading there, Aaron? That that's the main thing. I've been since oh. January dipping into um into Kafka's diaries as wow. well. But just sort of jumping in at random points whenever I'm in the mood. That's been really interesting. 
I have his diaries. I haven't even yeah. saw your video on the Hunger Artist yet, Greg. I, I need to watch that. Mm. Have you ever read the Hunger Artist, Alan? Oh yeah, I've oh, read yeah. it. I just haven't seen your video on it. That's a great short story. I like like that a lot. It is. My 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 my, my videos on short story are going to be a bust. I think. I don't think they're going to get a whole lot of views, but I'll still yeah. do them. I like. I've yeah. been really excited reading these short stories. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Saturday morning, you get to pick up a short story and. Mm. Sure. How about Alice I mean, Monroe? She's got some great short stories. Or um, um, she did not make my twenty cutoff. Oh, uh, how about Bartleby the Scrivener? That's one of my favorites. That is my all-time favorite, but I'm sticking to the 21st century for the oh, that's the 20th, right. the 20th century for the first round. Yeah, that's you right. got cut. You got cut for that reason. <laughs> I see. Um, oh, you want to? You know what I've been reading? Yep. Let's just let's just get through some. Do some comments. I'm gonna grab some coffee. Yep. These are people just <laughs> saying hi to each other, so I'm not gonna be. Um... Mm -hmm. oh, here you go. Lies of the Poets is an incredible book. I just acquired a hard copy copy for free from Thrift. Oh wow! All right. Yeah, you get... Who said that, Pat? Yeah, Pat. Yeah, she's she's doing a big poetry series. Um. Mm -hmm. Aaron, I went to a Welsh school when I was five or something like that for six ah. months. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, That's cool. People still saying hi. Oh, um, Ariane, I would love to be fluent in another language. I know a little Spanish and Italian. Ooh, I'd love to know Italian. And Ariane wants to get Kafka's diaries. Hello, read by Fred. Hooray, I think. Made it for a live <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Lee. Hey, Lee. Glad you made it. All right, Alan, what have oh. you been reading? Well, let's see. Uh, I'm kind of rereading this, or I'm re-listening to it in audio. I'm buddy reading this book, Mecca. It's mm -hmm. really excellent. I'm buddy reading this with uh, Caitlin mm -hmm. at Dandy's Books. She uh, picked it out. Southern California, it's real modern. And, uh, characters weaving in and out to story, line. It's a really great book. Then, uh, uh, along with you, Greg, I'm reading She and she? Uh, Spring into Adventure. I don't know if we can show this cover. <laughs> uh, and this is very interesting. You know, I'm reading the book and then I have it on uh, Kindle. And I don't know exactly what to make of it. I mean, it, I, I, it's true, right? Right? What? It's true, correct? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, he, he acts like it is, and I, I don't know it's like fantasy, but he, he's mm -hmm. got, got me kind of pulled in. It's, it, it's curious because... You don't see footnotes in a novel very often. No. He, he It's written as if it were a memoir that he's published. And when there's things that are clear, he puts a footnote. Mm. In the, now, it's kind of curious. He could have just made it clear in the text. Yeah. But he's pretending it's a memoir, and the person writing the memoir would not necessarily have mentioned that in his memoir. So then he puts mm. the explanation. Oh, that's kind of cool. Because yeah. like I think reading this on the Kindle, I can just like hit the yeah. uh, the end note, and I don't have to look it up. Mm. So yeah. I'm enjoying that with the group, and I'm about to read the short story if it bleeds. Now oh. Gareth, I'm sure will have a Stephen King collection on his. Uh, list. He's got a couple of good collections, but again, mm -hmm. his collections are uneven. Yeah, he'll have a like a, like it's like a a, a record from a, a band. Sometimes they'll throw a you know just a, a knockoff song in there. Yeah. So um, feel the track. We reading this by the end of the month. Yeah, the last okay. Wednesday of the month. I got I got to read that. I have I have not started reading that one. So. I haven't either. I want to read the whole thing. And then are we reading this too yes, for the, the Vonnegut group? Vonnegut group. 
Yeah, I've read this a few times. Um, I can't mm -hmm. wait uh, to dive back into some Vodigat. I know you, but you said you just bought the uh, encyclopedia, huh? I did. Yeah, I've had mine for a while, but it's oh, a good cool. thing to have. Is Cat's Cradle, is that the one where there's like a weird, like made up religion in it or something like yes. that? Yes. Yeah. Busy, busy, busy. Based on mm. Calypso songs. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. I want to get just hilarious with his his treatment is it, is of religion. It, it, yeah. He packed so much stuff into like one novel. It's... Mm. I think I've listened to like one. Um, like one Kurt Vonnegut short story in a podcast, and it was just one where it's like, wh wh where did he think of this? <laughs> uh -huh. I bet it was Harrison Bergenon. I think so. That's that's I, I, where yeah, that's where everyone is is equal by by force of law. Yeah, and then it's like a, the bit I can remember is that it's something like it felt like he could touch the ceiling, and he did, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it, 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 it's hilarious. I, I... Yeah, Harrison Bergeron. Here's the collection, Gareth. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Monkey, the monkey house. house. You know, I, I like Kurt Vonnegut, but that collection is, as I said, n really uneven. There's a lot. Uh, <laughs> Ver mm. Vonnegut didn't quite always hit it out of the park with his short stories. Mm. Now, Harrison Bergeron is a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's in here. So, anything else, Alan, that you've been reading? That's about it. Um, I was trying to uh, listen to one. Uh, the uh, what's the name? Oh, damn! Hang on. Uh, Stephen Graham Jones. I was trying to read the, his uh, the first book. Uh, this was uh, the second book, but. It's kind of YA a lot. Now, I really liked his uh, The Only Good Indians, that book. But I'm trying to, uh, I was going to read him for uh, Horror Mayhem, get a jump on that. Doing? I better stick with April, huh? Yep. All right. A um, few more questions before I tell you. Here's one for you, uh, Aaron. Aaron, how are you enjoying your e reader? I am. I am enjoying it. I keep getting distracted by physical books, but I do have it. I've got it right, right by me. So when I was going to read *The Fairy Queen* by Edmund Spencer, I had it as a ready to go as an ebook, um, just there. So yeah, I've been I've been enjoying it. I think I read some Seneca on it last month, um, and some other bits and bobs, um, but I just keep forgetting what's on there because it's not looking at me on the shelves. So I'm still getting past that bit. But when I'm actually reading it, I, I love using it. And I love the fact that it takes up so little space in my bag if I have to take it with me somewhere. Yeah, so, I like set mine up and just putting it on a desk where I can um, just kind of watch it. And then you yeah, turn the pages. just poke it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um couple more if it bleeds is an excellent read ah good to well, know i'm going back to some doctor who but there's a dialect video coming up in may on my channel okay people are having oh, nice. side conversations that's okay yeah <laughs> um book songs of the man how the book speaks differently to, to readers all right oh here's gareth i have read three vonnegut books and didn't like them I remember him talking. He read like three of the ones that are like not his best. Oh. You yeah. know, something like Bluebeard or Dead Eye Dick. I don't remember what the titles he were, but I said, you know, yeah. it's really not representative. Yours was like uh, Mother Night. I bet he'd like that. Mother Night. Well, my, my three favorite Vonnegut books would be Slaughterhouse Five, Mother Night, and Cat's Cradle. I think yeah. of Me too. I like um what was it? Oh man. What's the one about New York and the uh abstract expressionism? Uh Bluebeard. I like I like Bluebeard. 
Uh, yeah, it's good. I don't think it's his best, but it was good. Oh, no, not his best, but I like that one. Hmm. All right. Um, there was one asking you about your baby. I, yeah, yeah, I missed it. Oh, uh, yeah. With chat says, how's the baby, Aaron? There's your she, son. She's, yeah, oh, she's doing okay. Your daughter. My yeah, my, my, that's okay. But yeah, she, she's she's doing well. She 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 sleeps once she's sleeping. It's just wow. um, getting her to the sleeping stage that is <laughs> is difficult at the moment. But yeah, she's do, she's doing well. She's putting on weights and. How yeah. old is she now? She's just over a month. Oh um, wow, that's so, really yeah, very new. very young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All yeah, right, cool. So, what I've been reading is um, I've been actually doing a lot for the Book Two Prize. Um, I'm going to hold up one of the ones in the Book Two Prize I'm reading. I can't talk too much about the book, not because I haven't finished it, but um, I tried to listen to this as an audio book. And the author came on and says, Well, we had to make some changes to the book to do it mm -hmm. on audio. And the reason why they had to make change, I see if I can show you a page as an example, is, um, there we go. Oh, wait. Is that parts of the page are blacked out. Oh, wow. Like in the story, they're looking at a text, a medical text. And in the story, someone has gone on and crossed out homosexual references or something like that in the textbook, because this is the story of two gay men. It's sort of a dialogue together. So you really can't reproduce that mm. in an audio. It says, well, there'll be two other narrators for each of the main characters. And when I come on and talk these sentence fragments, you just have to imagine looking at a page with blackouts. Mm. So I, I just said, you know something, I'm not gonna bother with the audio. I just yeah. got the book out of the library. But what's also really weird in this book, you can't see it. The 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 font or the color of the font is brown. Oh. So it's sort of like faded text. Mm. I don't know. It's just, just it's just a really odd way. Yeah. To print a Did book. For effect to make it appear like an old manuscript, I, or? I think they're going for the effect like this is an older manuscript mm. that you're looking at. Is it working for you? Eh, no, because it's very contemporary. Oh. It's like, <laughs> oh, it, it would work better if they were talking like in the 20s or the 30s, but this is like contemporary. Now, maybe yeah. you're mm. supposed to be reading this in a hundred years oh, and looking yeah. at it there. I don't know, something like that. Mm. Yeah. But um, can't talk about the action because I'm a judge, but I wanted to hold up as a physical example. It's a very interesting way. Mm. It, it's a different way to publish a book and show show the text. So yeah. I, I was, and it has a lot of illustrations too, which don't work well in um, the audio format. Yeah. I imagine it would be quite expensive to produce that. I don't know. Um this hardcover is listed as 30 bucks. You know, I got it from the library, so I'm not okay. paying for it, but um, yeah. 30 US, 40 Can Canadian. I think that's about on par with new hardcovers yeah. now. It's kind of sounds average from what I hear. Yeah. On BookTube, yeah. Yeah, because I don't, as I said, I, I rarely read new books except for the Book Two prize. So, yeah. And that really isn't new anymore. That's like a year old. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's eventually what I've been reading. Like Alan says, I've been reading She and I've been re reading Les Miserables. Mm. That's my that's my stuff. So here's Gareth. I've been looking for you to continue on your classic Doctor Who videos. I find it hard to watch the Hartnell era. I don't know. Have, have you ever? Seen the old Doctor Who, Aaron? I, I have, yeah. I, th I think I saw the old Doctor Who before the sort of reboot happened. Um, and so, yeah, I think I think the first one I ever saw was with Tom Baker 
It was called the the horror of Fang Rock, and it was like with a lighthouse and these weird jellyfish creatures trying to I, get into the lighthouse. The, the, I, I I again I started with Tom Baker, mm -hmm. and there was a house with plant arms. Oh, like a giant plant. Yeah. I don't I don't remember, but mm. that that's that's the first episode that I saw. Yeah, and then. For a while, that's all they showed, and then they started doing like reruns of Tom Baker. Mm -hmm. And then, because when I watched it, this would have been back in the uh, 80s, maybe the early 90s, somewhere around there. And Tom Baker was the current doctor at the time. Mm -hmm. And then they started showing the old, the older ones, you know, like the William Hartnell, the Patrick yeah. Rogan, and. Mm. I like the. I mean, I kind of like the older ones. I mean, yeah, you don't really watch the, Doctor Who for for modern special effects, <laughs> but no. they were good. And then I think when it was in black, current, what? Oh, I was just gonna say when it was in black and white, it was harder to tell how bad the special effects were. I, you know, that I I find the older shows with their limited more charming than yeah. the modern effects that are there. You know, trying to really mm. convince you that it's real. I don't think it worked. Yeah. And then what happened was they had the, what's the last guy, Sylvester McCoy. Yeah. And then it ended. And then Doctor Who was over. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I'm done with Doctor Who. And then whatever, they came back and rebooted it. And I just mm -hmm. never watched any of the new episodes. Yeah. I just never, it's like, I was done with Doctor Who. It was done. It was a done deal. It was over. And mm. I've never seen Doctor Who. Never? Oh, no. I'm always the last one of the party. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. I don't know. No, I never saw it. So, um, Gareth says, if it bleeds, isn't actually impressing me yet. Not as good as the other stories so far. Well, mm. we shall see. Here, Here's Cobalt Dragon. If it bleeds, excellent read. <laughs> Got two contrary information. Yeah. <laughs> Now, all I remember is that when that book came out, they said If It Bleeds was the best story of the collection. Um, yeah, I'm going to read the whole collection. I don't know if I have time. I got, got so many other things to read <laughs> this month. Um, they're the third. Gareth said he didn't like them. Yeah, because, but I haven't read the famous ones. Mm. Elaine, I totally agree. Reading is very subjective. I'm sure King will win me over. Here's Lee. Were you the one talked about Mr. Penembra's 24-hour bookstore? Nope, that's not me. Mm -hmm. I have heard of that book, but I have never read it. Hmm. No, I haven't read it either. I haven't read it either. <laughs> oh, Quentin Curie's volume. Yeah. Well, Steve tried to Bigfoot your live stream, <laughs> but good to see you, Aaron. How are you all liking the Schmidt book? Ah, the Lives of the Poets. Yeah. Oh, he's talking about the Lives of the Poets. Yeah, it's it's really really good. I mean, I'm enjoying it, and it's I, I have a feeling that me and Schmidt have roughly the same kind of taste in poetry, and so when it's going into air areas that I'm I don't really like that much. Not, not only am I finding I'm agreeing with him, but also he's kind of he's kind of voicing these feelings that I hadn't articulated yet. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been quite rewarding, and it's helping me work out what I actually think about all these different poets. So it's yeah, been a lot of fun. Yeah, I was going to mention the romantics. I uh, mm -hmm. I like uh, Shelley and and Heats a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to learn more about them you know i study their poetry more i've got like a yeah collection of it up here and I, i've taken out uh, great courses but that was like a few years ago i don't really remember it mm. but yeah i got quite often I, I think it's a bit of a bad habit that you have where i'll like pick up a, a poet and i'll just read a lot by that poet in quite a short amount of time mm. and so then you know, two or three months later, I can hardly remember 
anything about what I've read. Um, and so it's, I kind of feel like that with, particularly with Shelley, I think I read quite a lot of him very quickly um, and feel like I've missed quite a lot. So I need to go back and mm. just pick, because the, he has some quite long poems. And so just to pick one long poem, read it slowly, see what I think about it and then move on to something different. Yeah, I would, I would uh, enjoy uh, doing that with you. I, I'm sure I'd learn a lot. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like a yeah re very rewarding buddy read. Yeah. All right. Cool. We got Hannah. Hello, Hannah. Hannah. Hello. Lee, for me, it's hard to understand. I keep saying "huh," but I love the references to Essa. I guess that's San Francisco, not science fiction. Hmm. I've only been to San Francisco for half a day. So oh. when I was a, a kid with my family, I was 13. We spent a uh, couple days there. I remember uh, seeing some guy uh, on a, a park bench sleeping and he was missing a foot. Mm -hmm. And then there was a guy on the wharf dressed in a gorilla suit playing Led Zeppelin on a, a Trump trumpet. <laughs> And every time somebody would give him like money, he'd go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Might be worth him giving money just to see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, San Francisco's wild. But I was only mm -hmm. 13. I didn't get a chance to really go to Hate Ashbury Street or anything. I was mm -hmm. with my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Love to go back. Maybe I might go back like someday. It. I might hit California again someday. I like California. A lot of California haters up here in Oregon. <laughs> I don't even, I have somewhere like a, uh, it says, Welcome to California with the state of Oregon design. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to California. Yeah. Mm. I, but I like California. I love Venice Beach and uh, I like Hollywood. I like all that stuff. Yeah. And so Lee said, I used to work there and I recognized all the places. Ah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Gara says, exciting dad times ahead for Aaron. Yeah. Yep, I, I remember so. that waking up all the time and mm -hmm. feedings. If, uh, mm -hmm. if you can't get him to uh, stop crying, you can drive him around in a car in the car seat. Yeah. Oh. oh. Tip for crowded circles. <laughs> that, that that reminds me of a very not really funny story. I have a shocking story, but sort of mm -hmm. funny. When I was living in Washington State, I was uh, on this uh, app called uh, Nextdoor, where just neighbors, you know, text messages going about what's happened in the neighborhood, and um, I we kept getting this text from these people. There's this woman driving around the neighborhood. She's scouting out for package packages to steal. Watch out. Oh. And so one of the other neighbors said, lock and load time, which what? basically means get your gun out. Yeah. And a couple days later, it says, never mind. This woman just has a baby she's trying to put to sleep. Yeah. America. And I'm just thinking, okay, there's a guy sitting there just hunkering down with his gun. Going, oh, yeah, rob me, rob me. I want you to rob me so I can shoot you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's a woman and her baby. Mm. At least, at least Aaron, you don't have those problems in Wales. No. <laughs> no, the police don't even carry guns. No. Nope. Or do they now? Not not unless it's something really serious. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, it's civilized yeah. over there. Mm. Swear to God. Yep, Kara says yeah. that's a weird font decision. He's talking about um, blackouts. Yeah, the brown. Hello, MJ. Charming is a great word for it. Charming. People saying hi. Lee just finished E.C. Fremantle, The Honey and the Sting, my third of hers, and they're still awful. 
<laughs> yeah, I hated the first one. I hated the first one. The second one even was worse than that. It was really bad. Now the fourth, <laughs> one, the fourth will be good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Lisa, San Francisco. San Francisco. Goodbye, Elaine. Bye, Elaine. You're gone already because you know we're we're behind as usual. So Gareth loved going to California in 2018. Wow. What city, Gareth? No, what no? Cities? I lived in San Diego for like three years. Love that. Yeah. I would I I I would have liked going to California and living there, but it was just too expensive. I've met mm -hmm. I said this before. My wife and I my wife had a conference for her job in San Diego. Yeah. And I, we were living up in Seattle at the time. And I said, you know something? Why don't I just come down there and we have a weekend after you're done with the conference? So we did. And we stayed on Coronado Island. Oh, yeah, that's a, the best. In, in, the in San Diego. Yeah. And we were just walking around. This would have been 2016-ish, somewhere around there. And... Walking down a neighborhood street, I said, "Oh, that house is for sale. Let's go pick up the flyers." <laughs> and it was one of these tiny houses, you know, two bedroom, one bath, oh, thirteen hundred square feet, one point two million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, "Okay, that's uh, a little bit more than I want to pay for that size of a house." But yeah. it was a beautiful neighborhood. Yeah, I know and that. Streets are really clean there. It's yeah, and I'm sure the neighbors are looking down at that one point. You're you're the cheap house on this street. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Ariane, I love the Mendocino area of California. Ooh, crazy story. Yes, it is. And and here in Virginia, it's probably even crazier with some of the people around here. Went to LA, cool. Yeah, Santa Monica. Love LA. Well, you can't for sure, but that was beachfront. Yeah, well, not quite mm -hmm. on the beach, but you know, close enough that you'd walk there. Mm -hmm. All right, that's the end of the comments for now. Um so Aaron, um, are you gonna be doing any other uh, booktube events? in the coming months? That's a good question. Um, I, I heard, I'm trying to remember where it was. It might have been, I think it was Debs um, uh, from Raina Reed stuff. I think she mentioned that someone else had mentioned that possibly Sargalong might be coming back at some point later in the year. Which one is this? A Sargalong. It's what, you know, Sargalong, when you oh, in the saga. Yeah. Or at least some kind of Saga-related event might be on its way and so i'm waiting to hear more about that because i've been wanting to read some sagas so i might you know yeah the, the, those sagas are just so fascinating mm. i remember uh freshman year at college first semester you you had you know a couple of classes you which ones would you like and they just pick one for you and i got assigned to the saga class but mm. some of them are just so fascinating they're just mm. like my favorite were Njal's Saga and okay. Yale Ale Saga, I think. Now, this won't come to a surprise to you guys, but uh, I, I've never read any sagas. Oh. <laughs> the last one. That, so I, I'd be interested in checking that out. You know, read one or yeah. two. Or, are they long or? They, never they that vary. long. They, they vary. Yeah. The longest are maybe 300 pages. Oh, and they're, mm. are they about Vikings and yeah, yeah, and about sort of about Nordic war. explorers going from right. All Iceland the Scandinavian to, countries, yeah. countries had their own versions of the. Now, did they all speak the same language back then? I think they must have. Like, I old, think they all, yeah, we've been old Norse. Yeah, old Nor well, well, what we now call old Norse. Mm. Yeah, I know the Nordic religion is called Athatru. That's the true with those like they have like a hammer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I heard that. Um, so, so like in in York, they've they've got loads of um, yeah, sort of Viking stuff, and apparently there's like a very specific um, kind of cross necklace that essentially when the Vikings started adopting Christianity, th they made the cross to kind of look a little bit like the hammer. Okay. So it, when they were like, you know, probably seeing their friends who weren't Christians yet, it wouldn't look too weird. Um, they tried to sort of blend the two together. It's quite interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I, that that'd be fun. I I've been very tempted. I, I had it at one time. There's a big volume that like has all or not all the Norse mm. saga, but a lot of the Norse sagas in one big volume. Yeah. I, I, Got that downstairs. Yeah, I, I got rid of my copy when I thought I was going to be moving. And I'm just mm. so sad that I got rid of it because yeah, yeah. And I, I think every saga's got its own introduction, and there are like maps to show where they're going on their journeys, and yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I would, I would enjoy mm. that. Yeah. Um, Wait, what month is is it? I, I don't know because in in previous years I think it was in April. Um, oh, I remember. I think it. that, yeah. But I, I think the main host in past years was Luke. Was it Vin? Was it Vin? Reverend Reed? Oh yeah, I think Vin was also. Yeah, I think there were quite a few people. And last year I think it happened, and then just haven't heard anything about it. So. And then just Debs kind of mentioned it the other day in the video. Um, so okay. we'll, we'll see. All right. Mm. That's all you're planning? Mm. Nothing nothing big? I, I'm not sure. I, I think I'm going to take it take it as it comes, really. I'm kind of umming and ahhing about Faulkner in August this year. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're doing um, – is it As I Lay Dying? As year? I Lay Dying. Yeah, because that, that is one I'd like to reread. Oh, um, so I'm, yeah, on the fence, but I'll probably give in by the time <laughs> August August rolls around. Yeah, yeah, I'll try try to poke you into it. Yeah, it's probably the book, the only book where I can um, memorize an entire chapter. Right, <laughs> mother is a <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there yeah, has to be other books that have short line chapters. Yeah, Some. maybe. Yeah, and maybe not as famous as. <laughs> yeah i think i saw that when i picked it up in the bookshop and i was like well i have to read this book now and work out what this means yeah yeah faulkner he's got disabled characters in several novels mm. yep probably one of the first writers to do so Mm. Yep. Oh, yeah. Here's Gareth. Vin ah, nice. the Sog Along is coming back. That sounds good. That sounds oh. good. I will have to uh, keep my eye out for uh, North Saga sales mm. on the horizon. Lee says, Me either. I, I bet she's talking to not being able to afford that $1.2 million house. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably about the how much my entire street costs. <laughs> Howdy, everyone, says Randy. I'm a bit late. I'm so excited to see my hey, favorite Randy. tubers in one place. Well, hello. Oh, Randy. Thanks, Randy. Okay, here's a question for Aaron. Any good historical books on whales, please? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> Moby Dick is a, a good one. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I've had to read some, but can't can barely remember really any. So yeah, we were talking I'm really about bad that before the show. Mm. Yeah, I remember. Hey on our way. Yeah, hey on why. It's a good, a good, a good spot. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm always kind of beating myself up that I don't read nearly as many Welsh authors as I should and because mm. um, there, there's plenty of good stuff but um, yeah I'm not really sure the, the only one that springs to mind is probably not one that Lee would <laughs> want to read 
But did you know that the Horrible Histories series for kids? Um, they, 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 there's one on Wales that I found funny, but it's, it's for kids and has cartoons and things in it. Um, but yeah, there, there probably are. There's probably a lot of really, really good stuff. Um, there, there's certainly some good history of Wales, um, like YouTube channels as well that I've sort of stumbled across in in, in my suggestions, sort of going into. Um, I think almost into pre-Roman times um, and into hostility between the Welsh and the Irish. I think they used to raid each other yeah. <laughs> quite a lot. Um, um, and so, yeah, there's some YouTube channels that sort of go into that, into the early sort of murky history that we don't know too much about. Well, one of my favourite poets is uh, Welsh. Dylan? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I named my son, uh, his middle name is Dylan Thomas. Mm. So he's like a J.R.R. Tolkien. He's got like two middle names. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I mentioned uh, this morning, I talked to him. I have a friend in Dublin, and she uh, just got back from Wales on the ferry. She loves it mm. in Wales. Yeah. yeah. So what, what, what about... Um, Good fiction or literature, either translated from the Welsh or oh. in Wales itself. Or well, in in Wales itself. You know, you know, located. I, yeah. yeah. Trying to remember. Um, there's there's a book. I don't have it anymore. It it is translated from Welsh, called Feet in Chains. Um, let's see who who it's by. I I um, remember reading something. It's like graveyard dirt. Oh, geez, I wrote a poem called titled oh. that years ago, but or like the dusty earth or something, you know, something. Yeah. Graveyard yeah. dirt. Yeah, it's what I'm thinking of. Feet and chains is by Kate Roberts, um, and it, I think it brings to mind because she's from the same. Oh, I think I've have I disappeared. No, I'm back. Um, yeah, she's uh, from the same area of Wales from where I grew up, up in the northwest of Wales. And it's about a small sort of uh, quarry community. Um, I think around the time of the, the First World War, and it's you know, a very small, very rural community. And mm. yet, you know, the First World War is still affecting it in a massive way. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's one that often springs to mind, um, and it's a mainly because it's in a very familiar landscape. Um, but yeah, what else is good? Welsh fiction. I, I've seen a fair bit sort of pop up on um, on BookTube, but it's all stuff I haven't read and can't remember the names of. <laughs> okay, I was trying to look at the, the one I was thinking of. I, I can't find it yeah. right now. Just looking at my iPhone. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's like trying to um, read books from all the different countries of the world. Yeah, and I think and sometimes w- when it's so familiar, sometimes you just want something that's different uh, as well. So uh, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. It's like I said, it's something like graveyard dirt, something like dusty mm. earth, and as I said, the author wrote it in Welsh, which I guess you don't write a lot of books. The novels in Welsh mm. because there's not. It's a very niche market. There's yeah, not a lot of readers for that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there is a, a Welsh literary community, but it, it is quite small. Right, just um, like uh, Irish. Yeah. 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 I could, when I was at university, there was one. Um, went to a creative writing workshop, and my um, um, like poetry lecturer she was fr- from ireland and she'd invited a poet over to do a a whole workshop about poetry in irish and then she, and it was just it was, it was really strange because obviously we were in we we're all in wales um and so none of us knew, knew irish and yet we're sort of there listening to her read out these poems and it was, it was really really cool um i wonder if they did any yates i guess he wrote some in in irish 
Mm-hmm. But I wonder what would be the point because he wrote in English, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know, but mm-hmm. yeah, I like yeah. Baseball too. Mm. So here's Lee. I'm still collecting my pile for Art September. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's our that's we're gonna bookins and books. You know, Elizabeth is gonna be starting mm. up uh to read art in September. I'm gonna be volunteering oh, to get co-host. That's cool. I'm going to read this. Oh, I've got that as well. Do you? Yeah, I've got a... Let's let's see if I can find it. Yeah, and then I've got some other art books over here, like those... uh, There we go. Okay. I I keep meaning to read this, and I I never do. So maybe I'll I'll join in. Now, is... I don't even, I mean, I know a little bit about Van Gogh's art, but whether his letters are really that mm. interesting. Well, I just saw that movie too, uh, Letters to My Brother or something, His Brother mm. Phil. So I don't know if that was the title, but it was a great movie. So uh, I assume he's going to have letters to his brother Theo in here. I mm. don't know. It's, it's difficult, like when you're reading someone's. Like say if it's like a writer's letters or diaries, you kind of expect them to be at least a little entertaining because that they're, they're a writer, so they're kind of at least kind of in their element, even if it is a little more thrown together. Whereas if it's an artist, you're not not quite sure what to expect. Right, but since he was pretty pretty mad, pretty crazy, yeah, found to be, and uh, you know that I want to hear the story about why he cut his ear off over that. Yeah, <laughs> as well. Yeah, I have a bunch of these. I was gifted a bunch of these books, like the world of Leonardo and the oh, world wow. of Michelangelo, and that's a good color. I ha- I have one on Goya, but that's mm. I don't have that one. I don't think. Yeah, you know, may if you ever visit us again, you might think that might slip into your like your suitcase or something when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe. I well, like him. He, he's kind of grotesque, but I like that. Yeah. I remember when um, you know, Matthew from Maybury Book Club, and he went to Spain, and he was des- describing going to the um, the museum where they have all of this Goya, and they, I think they have it in a room where you have to kind of walk at a kind of incline to get in, and it's all dark in the room as well. And so it's almost as if when you're going to this Goya exhibition, it's almost like you're descending into hell <laughs> as you're kind of going in there, which sounded very dramatic and theatrical. That was kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. 2666. And I guess, oh, I guess probably talking about Lee, you know, Art September. So yeah, Art September, you know, the whole idea is, I think, read a work of fiction about art read an art book and maybe go visit an, and we're going to try to like go visit an art museum nearby. Mm. Yeah. Horrible well, histories is yeah. amazing. I've never heard of horrible histories before. Yeah. It's probably a very, very British thing. No. I mean, it's yeah. got, yeah, it's got a bit more currency because they've, there's was like, they turned it into a kid's TV show and then there've been movies made out of it as well. So yeah, it's probably, it's probably very British and hasn't really, gone out to the rest of the world. Gotten across the pond yet. Yeah. Mm. So Lee, wasn't there a fabulous queen whose name started with B? I'm not sure. I mean there's there's Boudicca, uh Queen of Britain. And then I suppose in, in the Mabinogion, so in sort of Welsh legends, there's Branwen. Um so yeah I'm not not, not sure which it could be or it could be someone else. I'm not sure. Okay. Mm. So, Fred, weird jellyfish creatures, Aaron. Those were the <laughs> mm-hmm. planting monster Greg. That was Seeds of Doom. Ah. Classic ah. Doctor Who is awesome. Yeah. And he's saying, hey, Alan, you're definitely not the last one to the party. Doc- Classic Doctor Who is an acquired taste. Oh, okay. Mm. So, now, Aaron, have you watched both? I have. I don't think I've seen Seeds of Doom. No. But no, just generally, you've seen some of I've, the old. I've, I've, and new yeah, I've seen old and new. I, I think I stopped 
the new when I it was about halfway through Peter Capaldi, I just sort of lost interest. Um, but I enjoyed Christopher Eccleston, enjoyed David Tennant, enjoyed Matt Smith, and then yeah, just started drifting away from it when um, Peter Capaldi became the Doctor. Okay. Um, so do you like the? Yeah. Do you think the old ones are better than the the new or? Um, I, I I think I do prefer the, the, the old ones. Yeah, I I, I started rewatching the new ones recently and sort of found they weren't quite as that there are some really really good episodes that I was really excited about, but also actually finding that that for me there's also a lot of nostalgia behind those, and that actually probably in twenty years time we'll be looking back at these newer dot who's in the same kind of lens as we're looking at. The classic Doctor Who now that it's all a bit, you know. <laughs> yeah. Now, someone said like the old Doctor Who had storylines, mm. sort of like cliffhangers, where you're one episode, yeah. and the next episode, and you have like six episodes or so that make up mm. one story. And someone said the new ones is all one story condensed to one episode. I don't know if that's true or not. No, normally, yeah. I think when they brought it back, they had a, a kind of of a formula throughout the series where like in one season you'd have maybe two or three standalone episodes and then you'd have maybe two episodes that are like a part one and a part two and then it sort of go on from there sort of interspersed so sometimes you get a part one and a part two and sometimes the whole season might have an overarching narrative that ties it together but yeah it's not as as, as cliffhangery as the um as the originals and i think yeah with the old doctor who you had the chance for the story to kind of you had grow and develop a little bit right. yeah sometimes too much yeah i, I, <laughs> but... I, I just remember some like i remember like k9 and one's like comes into a room and he's like firing his nose laser or something. <laughs> yeah and it just ends and i i can't remember it's like dialects or cybermen or whatever but yeah it was fun mm. So, Fred, once I'm done with Doctor Who videos, I'll be doing Blake 7. Now, I've never oh. seen Blake 7. No, heard of it, but don't think I've ever seen it. Groucho letters have amazing moments, but they aren't consistent. Oh, that's sad. If they're private letters, they may not have the wit you're hoping mm. for. Yeah. Uh, here's Gareth. Capaldi's stories are very mawkish and mopey. Yeah. Uh -huh. Mawkish yeah, and it mopey. Didn't, it didn't really feel, at least to me, it didn't really feel like a like a science fiction show anymore. Like I wasn't really sure what it was um, when when Peter Capaldi was there. It felt like very gimmicky and, yeah. Mm. Um, there's read by Fred. I've heard of Blake Seven, but no. It's, it's, okay, there's three people, four people with yeah. Fred. Never really <laughs> seven. <laughs> Fred, it was amazing. Robin Hood in space with characters who all hated each other. Okay. Robin Hood in space. Robin Hood in space. Mm. Ebbs would like that. Mm. Living in Nottingham like she does. Yeah. I assume yeah. she'd like it. All right, so we're going on booktube subjects, and um, we, could, we could put we could put uh, great display and talk about guitars. Oh, <laughs> and I both have Stratocaster guitars. Mm. So, yeah, I don't know about guitars. <laughs> no, we won't do that. No, I know. Was it was it Enchanter Ram that one of the main characters had a guitar? My no, please. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did DNF. With it, but don't go down the guitar route. Do not yeah. talk about your guitar in the book. It's I really mean, hard to write about music in a a way that's compelling to someone who isn't into music. I think. Ah. And some people can do it. I think, but I think yeah. it's quite difficult. I, Joyce I, has a whole episode on. Uh, what episode is it? It's the uh, Orman Hotel one. Anyway, I just on music and uh, 
they say uh, uh, he he used some kind of technique where he's writing sentences that correspond to notes and all that. Uh, I'll uh, have to rediscover that when we get to it this summer. Mm. Well, I think someone someone said writing about music and art is a real talent because it's just yeah not something that's naturally in words. It's like images and and sounds. Mm. Yeah, I, I can remember um, you know uh, Carlo Vignalskart in his My Struggle books. There's I've only read the, the first one so far, but I've only read the first one too. Yeah, and there's, there's a bit in that where he's talking about his band that he had as a teenager and their, oh, I remember their that. first their first gig and about how badly it goes, and yet in their heads they think they're the best thing ever. And I think you can uh -oh. sort of connect to that and yeah. Well, I can connect to that because you know I, I was a teenager once and I thought what I did as a teenager was great stuff. But someone uh -huh. will recognize my genius. I resemble that remark. Oh, yep. the same way. I think Aaron's freezing up. Yeah, a little bit. He's back, I think. Oh, dear. I've disappeared. We can hear you, but you're froze up, Aaron. Yeah. I think he will come back in just a second. I think it's a temporary glitch. Let's um, see if we can. Um, there he is. I remember being a young teenager, 13, probably, and stumbled across Doctor Who on a PBS and thought, what the hell is this? I stumbled across on PBS, too. I think that's how all of my generation and Randy got to see Doctor Who. I, I don't know what I was doing at the time because I, I love PBS. Oh, I never just, I never came across it. Where where were you in, Tina? You in Ohio? Yeah, Toledo, Ohio. Okay. I don't mm -hmm. know. Maybe I'll check them out on YouTube. Maybe. Tom Baker was the doctor. I remember being fascinated, but very confused. <laughs> My last novel was about a band, no. ha, 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 but it's quite mad. Yeah, who's reading? I think Jim is reading that, right? Jim at uh, uh, Mystery and Mayhem? He might be. I think he is. I'd like to read that, Gareth. I read his poetry. His book of poetry was good. Mm. It's the baddest read. Why did you do this to me, Dimmy? Dimmy? <laughs> I think that's a question for Aaron. Aaron. I, I don't know. <laughs> don't know who Dimmy is. I don't know. I suppose we'll find out. Maybe it's like maybe it's because we have this show at an odd time. Maybe not our oh, oh, okay. Is it coming back to you? Now now it's making sense. Um She's reading um, oh. The Exorcist. Oh. Okay. 200 more pages, Greg. Power <laughs> of Christ compels. Uh, yes, it does. Jeez, what a book. That's a great, that's that's a great book. Yeah, I'm afraid to reread it. Boy, because it goes into all these details that are even uh, worse than the damn movie. Like uh, she's uh, like arching on her back crawling on her fingertips and stuff and <laughs> yeah I, I flip out easily well Alan, I'm, like, a I'm, a very, is, I'm a very rich inner life it's just a book <laughs> that's the one thing that's kind of funny when people talk about books that scare you they, they always talk about monster books like I'm scared of the devil possession <laughs> nonfiction <laughs> scares the bejesus out of me more than than fiction. Yeah, I'm not really yeah. so scared of the devil. I don't think the devil's real. You know, I'm not that. You know, some people do. I don't think you know hell is real. Like, if there if there wasn't for Dante, we we wouldn't even know what hell looks like. But <laughs> oh, a vision of hell. Yeah, mm -hmm. a vision. 
Yeah, hell, actually, you know, Dante's version, uh, this, D-I-S, Satan lives in, uh, it's freezing in hell. Yeah. Yeah. His, his wings are, yeah, like an aircon. Just, yeah, that, that book really, to this day, really got to me. I'll, I'll try to reread it maybe for Horror Mayhem. Mm -hmm. Well, we got the 70s. Well, that's another question coming up in just a minute. But <coughs> Excuse me. Let's There's this. a lot on my PBR for uh, Horror Mayhem. Horror Mayhem is short oh, yeah. stories. Read short stories. Don't read novels. Short stories. <laughs> well, I'm reading uh, Pet Cemetery with MJ. So that'll be that'll be a treat. Mm -hmm. I read that like thirty years ago or so. That I read that. One, I read that one as a new book. I go. To, I do want to reread it eventually. Isn't that crazy? That's like forty years ago. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. forty-five. Yep. Please. So mm -hmm. let's, Aaron. What made you mm -hmm. fall in love with the classics? Is there anything in particular that you enjoy from the genre? I, th I think it was a very it was a very gradual thing, um, and I, I think I think the reason why the classics are what I really like reading is probably because I suppose that's just what got me into reading consistently. I think sort of dabbled in other things, and then just the fact that all these books are kind of referencing each other, and you hear this author th thrown up. In, in some place you go try them and so so yeah I, th I think it was just may, may, maybe the, the the first thing that got me really excited was when I was about maybe 16 17 and it, it would have been like um it was like a poetry section for my a levels um and every every week we'd have just one poem to read and it'd just be like a a sonnet by John Donne or um, I heard a fly buzzed while I died by Emily Dickinson, or something, something like that, just on a piece of A4 paper. And there's something that I really loved about just having a short poem on a piece of paper, and just spending an hour or two talking about it and annotating it. Um, so I think that probably did a lot to get me excited and engaged with l literature that was maybe older and wasn't sort of immediately easy where the language was a bit trickier and you had to sort of work at it a bit. Well, that's one of the things I'm sort of liking about Les Miserables is that you get a lot more detail and depth mm -hmm. than almost all modern fiction. He's just yeah, not afraid to go there. Mm -hmm. And someone, I, I, I forgot, I read it somewhere, is like in Henry James time, and they, I'm pretty sure they used Henry James' example, if he had his characters visiting an Italian villa, he yeah. would give you a big description of the Italian villa. Yeah. You know, but but and for modern writing, the, the thing is like, everyone knows what an Italian villa looks like. You just say, they went to an just, Italian villa. And just yeah. the reader bring in that detail. But in James's day, you could not assume that they knew what an Italian yeah. villa, villa. So you just described it. Mm. I think that I think description is a, probably another big thing that I think I enjoyed, and I enjoy kind of immersing myself in, in the world of the novel, even though it's not. I suppose when people talk about immersion in books or escapism in books, that they're, they're often talking about fantasy and stuff, where there's a lot of world building. Um, Whereas I, I think I do appreciate that amount of detail to a novel, uh, like a sort of just a, a classic, you know, literary novel. Um, it's like we brought up um, Thomas Hardy before we started right. this. And I think for, for a long time, Far For The Madding Crowd was my favourite, uh, Thomas Hardy. And I think it was just because of the descriptions of the landscape and, mm -hmm. and the weather. And it really, really felt like I was living in the book as I was reading it. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's probably the, the other thing is just those really vivid details. Yeah. I, it, and that's an amazing, you, you just mentioned like the, the details in class and the details in fantasy. I mm. never really thought about that before that maybe one reason fantasy 
is so popular now is that mm -hmm. you are getting this in-depth yeah. book experience that the contemporary authors are cutting out because they assume you just know what it is. Yeah, and it's kind of like the modern literary books. It's like a set for a spaghetti western, and you walk around the side of the building, and it's just the front. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Besides. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, I think, would, that's an interesting high, thing to think about. Whether yeah. in high school, that for me, like the atmosphere mm -hmm. stuff and uh yeah you know, the uh the moors the description of the north uh country and i uh, i've read that probably three times yeah are you a fan of weathering heights aaron uh yeah I, that's probably my favorite bronte book i think yeah, yeah. some people aren't i couldn't yeah. finish it no no, really? I was listening to the audio book and it was just didn't oh, care. I really Maybe agree. I should just try it reading the book instead of listening mm -hmm. to the audio. I might might like it better, but the problem is is the characters. And um yeah. there is uh Heathcliff. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I guess I think with Brian at Bookish. It is. That um Heathcliff does something to a dog. Yeah, it kills it. Like, I, I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot accept this man as anything other than a monster. Yeah. yeah. And, and that there are loads of little details in, in the book that the first time I read it, I hadn't noticed. And they're just mentioned, but they're really, really disturbing, like stuff that the kids do. And they're just little signs that these kids are really not happy. And I didn't pick up on them the first time around, but there's some little disturbing bits in there that I'll yeah. keep that in mind because mm. I'll probably end up rereading it again I really enjoy it mm. so oh yeah Jim's read and reviewed Gareth's book oh. 200 pages more grip. yeah we're talking the exorcist <laughs> um, it definitely goes way into details I just passed the stairs part uh, Gareth Greg have you got people for you yes I have a sufficient number of co-hosts for my horrors readathon project. I guess I can announce it's no big secret that um, you know, right now we're doing all about Holly, discussing all the books about Holly Gabby by Stephen King. After that is done, I'm going to take a month off and then restart a very similar project where we're going to read 70s horror books. Yeah, that would be fun. Yep. I'm trying to, you know, I really can't. The one that came to my mind, it turns out he was uh, like more of an 80s writer, Robert R. McKinnon. But other than King and Kuntz, who, uh, I'm trying to think, like, who are some of your favorite ones, Greg? Oh, from the 70s? Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think there's a lot of, um, big popular authors that um, came out. Like they don't have massive numbers of books. Um, the Exorcist is a big book. Um, I want to revisit. Well, we don't know which ones we're going to pick yet. So I don't want to start. Info, but The Harvest <laughs> Home by Thomas Tryon is good. Oh, I've never heard of that. Um there's this little novel called The Hephaestus' Plague, which may or may not. I've read it before. I don't know if it'll get picked. I think it's sort of on, probably won't get picked. I think there's some bigger books to pick. But yeah, I the thing is about it is I like the era. And I like, I like the writing that you had in the 70s is that, mm -hmm. like we're talking a little bit about the classics, is like the pace was just a little slower. Even if it's a shorter book, it's it's not this mm -hmm. manic. Let's get this made into a movie and have action from, you know, yeah. chapter two on the end of the chapter. It's gung ho. It's just a little slower, and that's what I like. Hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Bad crucifix never <laughs> happened in the book. What a bummer. Keep reading. You know that's the thing <laughs> um, about BookTube that I like. It's like the friendships you make. Probably number one, and then the education, the free education that it's just yeah. 
and <laughs> getting turned on to new things. So I, I really like that when somebody yeah. can turn me on to a, a new book or something. Mm. I, you know, I'm there. Yeah, I was just thinking. I think earlier today that there are probably a lot of books that I've read in the last two years that are up in some of my favorite books that I may have heard of before BookTube, but I had no idea whether they were books that I'd even consider reading. And mm -hmm. I think like BookTube was definitely the thing that sort of broke the ice for me with those books and just hearing people talk about it. And maybe that person that's talking about it has, has read other books that I have liked. And so I can, you know, it just makes me feel like I could actually tackle it eventually. And then you know, suddenly it's one of my favorite books and, yeah, it's a really, yeah, really special it is. thing. I mean, it's like I never really read Westerns before mm -hmm. Michael Tavon came in and did June on the Range. I said, sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd read some that were sort of West, you know, can be like Lonesome Dove is like, it's a Western, but it's not really labeled as a Western, even though it really is. Yeah. And makes you think about things like that. Mm. And I guess with the events, it's it's kind of in, infectious. You kind of get excited about it because everybody else is as well. Yep. Right. Then there's a bit of FOMO. FOMO. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Randy said, oh, it didn't take me long to realize that if she were worried about it, we couldn't have a copy of the... Oh, he's talking about the exorcists. <laughs> Oh, bad. Under a tornado watch and listening to the audio of The Exorcist. It's a perfect day for an exorcist. Oh, oh, wow. Watch out for that tornado. Make sure you know where all the animals are so you can get them out if you need to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tornado way up. Stay safe. Bad. Yeah, we're getting some bad weather soon. Mm -hmm. um, what's the term? World building? Yeah. Yeah, for like mm -hmm. fantasy or Faulkner does excellent world building and Yaka Matumba mm -hmm. County invented a yeah. whole county. Yeah. Joyce does some world world building and reinvents Dublin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember remember we're doing Ulysses in June and July this coming year. Ooh, that's very tempting. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, we're well, talking about we're gonna do it in two months so yeah not not it, not the try to the just... way through because what i want to do yeah. is i'm gonna i ha also have uh the audio of the great courses so i can read read the the book listen to the audio at the same time and then listen to the college discussion and mm -hmm. then come discuss yeah. it on booktube and finally say oh okay I could say I understand yeah. Ulysses, or yeah. maybe I don't understand a damn thing about that. <laughs> you know, yeah. you both the great courses on Ulysses is good. I have that too, and uh, yeah, yeah, super, super helpful. And then I have the text on audio as well. So I'll be, yeah, the tough chapters are like uh, chapter three, and then the Circe, the longest one, which is a play. That's yeah. Yeah, that was I, I. I enjoyed that, but I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> yeah, a character blots out the sun with his finger. I mean, you can never put on the play. Although, yeah, you know, kind of 20, 30 years ago, there's a movie version of Ulysses that's mm -hmm. like uh, almost unwatchable. And hasn't someone put on just that? Like, is it called Night Town or something like that? That section. Or maybe the play was called Night Town, and it, it was just yeah. that, just that bit. Oh, I'd like to see that. I've never seen that. Yeah. yeah um, Cersei. Here's Hannah. I too love the immersion that happens in classic novels. The atmospheric nature of Hardy's books is remarkable. I've yeah. I, I've read his, his his big books. I've read um, Jude the Obscure, Return of the Native. Far from the matting crowd. Mm. There's another big Test one I missed. Test, Test of the Test of the I mentioned that. I, I think oh, yeah. another big one I'm missing. I, I like them. I have not uh, read his, yeah. his lesser novels. Mm. But yeah, again, yeah, I, I love. I have this feeling when I go to England, I want I want to go to Thomas Hardy country, 
and take mm-hmm. a day, like they have these day walks. You just walk through the paths and just uh, absorb the, the countryside. Yeah. Yeah, you would enjoy that. I would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would too. Gareth, it's an aspect of fantasy and science fiction where the new world or society is created in a descriptive form to establish a setting. I think he's adding, asking um, what's that mm-hmm. world, world, building. world building? Gareth yeah. has answered that better than we did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for the classic horror 70s. Yeah, it should be good. Mm-hmm. Indeed. It's going to be very fun. I definitely love the classics. Too bad Rosemary's Baby couldn't make it. Yeah, I Rosemary's really Baby was 1967. I and, it. and my my arbitrary cutoff was just, we're just doing 70s. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I think I haven't movie. read I haven't read Rosemary's Baby, but um, A Kiss Before Dying. I think it's probably I think the I only read that one. Yeah, I it's, it's Rosemary's it. Baby. Hmm. And he has a couple different thrillers. A yeah. Silver. Silver. Mm. Silver. Or Sliver. What's the one by him? Is it Sliver? Sliver? That might be by him. That might be one of his later books that I don't think is um, well known or mm. done. Is there a horror book that you would recommend to a newbie? Who is mm. honestly a scaredy? I, I, was, I think The Exorcist is a really good book to pick up. How about The Terror by Dan Simmons? The Terror by Dan Simmons is a pretty good one. It's a little, it's a little long. It's yes. 800, 900 pages, so you may want to. Mm. That might be my favorite uh, horror book. Mm, I like to get to that one. Early, early Stephen King is always good. Something. Early 70s, early 80s, you know, his um, Carrie, Salem's Lot, The Shining, maybe The Stand. I, I don't think I would recommend The Stand for that. <laughs> Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery. I, I, I wouldn't say is a good book for someone who's never stepped into a horror book before. Oh, uh, yeah. One of my favorites, Stephen King's book. It is Robert McCammon, you mentioned. Yeah, well, some really good ones. Swan songs a bit long too, but some of his um, sure. I liked one of his early books. Some people don't like, it, but Bethany's Sin. I don't know if anyone remembers that. It. It's 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 one of his earlier books that he sort of disowned for a while, then then let be republished. I kind of like mm-hmm. it because I first read it when I was like fifteen, and it's like like. I'm reading an adult horror book. And- uh-huh. mm-hmm. I can almost see the cover, too. It had one of those uh, uh, bubbly covers uh, that unfolded and maybe had like a hole you could see something through. It had a woman on an evil horse. Oh, you have it? I have it. Yeah, I love those old covers. Um, let's see where this is. Well, now, oh, there it is. Mm. Oh, okay. Then you got to figure out why is this woman riding this evil horse? And you, you will eventually, if you read it, you'll find out. And to, <laughs> and to a teenager, it's like, oh my God. What was this <laughs> So I, I, you know, I read it as an adult and it's more nostalgia, more nostalgia. I don't know how an adult would mm. pick it up, especially it was. A product of its time, like I said, it was published. No, it was 1980. So, nice. you know, written in the set. Probably he wrote it in the 70s. You know, published in the 80s. So, mm. it is a product of its time. When you get to the 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 evil that's going on in this small town, that <laughs> that it may not go over well. Let me guess. Is that Satanism? No, no, okay. No. Ha ha, great reading, yeah. Oh, he's loud because she, she, um, the house next door is from the 70s and it's brilliant. 
Well, Randy, that is an option for our group. I know you you have two books you're, you're, you're dithering back and forth on that group that you wanted to do Salem's Lot. You also mentioned the house next door. But, you know, as a member, you get to pick one that we read. So more or less. You get to pick. Mm -hmm. Both of the both of those are generally available to the public. So uh, thanks, Gareth, for explaining. Hello, it's been a while since I've been able to catch you. Well, hello, Dusty Book Sniffer. Hey. I can't remember your name, unfortunately. I have a bad memory with names. Um, I have a good memory. I, I'll guess, is it Nicole? I think. Mm. We'll see. We'll find Maybe. out. Maybe. Hannah's question hinges on what makes you scared? Mm. What's more scary ghosts, the devil, home invasion, monsters, serial killers? Yeah. I think for me, definitely when it's what a human can do to another human. Right. That's when it that's when it gets scary. Like I'm quite quite happy with like like Dracula is one of my favorite books. Um and I love like ghost stories, like classic MR James stories and things like that. I love. But as soon as it's a human doing something to another human, then I, I can't stand it. Yeah, the, like I said, like what scares me nowadays is like mm. the, the certain people in America have these ideas of the way the country should be run, and um, that mm -hmm. that scares me much more yeah. than ghosts or devils because I know there are no ghosts, I know there are no mm -hmm. devils, but there yeah. are people out there who would absolutely love to be an authoritarian ruler in this country mm -hmm. and people like me i may not be the first one to go but mm -hmm. i might be the third or fourth to go yeah. people like me would be the first to go well and you're, you're, you're <laughs> second at that <laughs> they'd be coming after me oh they're coming after you but you're not going to be first in line <laughs> no i'm not be third that's what I say. I'm, I'm third or fourth. A uh, carry in the shining are my all time favorite kings. Okay. Mm, I love the shining. Yep. That's a, a that that's a real good one. He was he was hitting on all cylinders when he wrote that. Mm -hmm. Red rum. Um. Tony, let's say Tony lives inside my mouth. I'm not yeah, sure well, here's, here's the question is like that. It's I heard the book of the shining is different from the movie. The yeah. Jack character is more disturbing in the book. Oh yeah. I don't know. That's the, the um, I think there is in the book, you feel more of the, the character's decline. Yeah. He has, one, he has one. I won't say the scene. There is one scene in that book, The Shining, where if he, you know, he, he, if you read it, where, where Jack is locked in the, the, the closet, Aaron, have you ever read the book? No. Oh, okay. So I, prob you, I probably never will, but <laughs> no, I won't say it, but it's where the main character, Jack, has been locked in a closet and there's a latch and he, he's shaking and he's trying to escape. And then something happens, and I'm trying not to spoil it, but it's just like an amazing scene because you say, is it supernatural or is it natural? But it's I this, think this, I remember this, that. The way I, he's hallucinating, I think. Well, it, it's, 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 I, I, Nicole, I, I can say, I can read it. If she's read, read the book of The Shine, she knows the scene. And it's just in, this incredible flip. Where where the character Jack becomes this truly evil person, and it's really done well. Mm. Yep, and the name is the Cole. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I remember that for next time. So, uh, Hannah, I totally agree with Aaron about what is frightening mm. stuff that I think it actually happened. Human to human violence, and that's mm. me. It's like I'm I'm more scared of these people yeah. trying to over the country than they ever would be mm. from a then, killer rat or a ghost. 
Yeah. I'm probably saying that though. Ryan. Probably Psycho is my hey, favorite. Brian. Oh. Sorry, yeah. Aaron. What was that? Oh, I was just saying, considering what I said, probably Psycho is still my favorite horror film or slasher film. Yeah, I love Hitchcock. That, that might be just stylistically in the mood of it, though, I think. Oh, yeah. The, the actual book, Psycho, is actually really good. Ah. That, um... Yeah, yeah I keep There are subtleties that. that are different. I mean, I, mm. I, I read Psycho two years ago, and it's been a mm. long time since I, I watched the movie, but um, the character of Norman Bates is slightly mm. different oh, okay. in, in, in the novel. That'd be interesting because it's such a iconic character. It is. It is. Um, it's mostly the same. Okay. You, you're not gonna. You're not gonna get a huge big difference. Like Norman Bates is not doing what Norman Bates. Hmm. You know. But yeah. so Gareth, the Book of the Shining is much more subtle, and the other characters are better characterized. I agree. Um, I remember seeing The Shining in the theater opening night. You know, when it was a brand new movie and saying, this isn't really the book. It's just the director just mm. took it in a totally different direction. I saw the, uh, I saw uh, Misery on opening night. I remember I, I actually won two, three movie tickets. To that. What movie? Mystery? Misery. Misery. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah and, uh, you know, of course, you can't totally reproduce the, uh, all the, stuff in there that book has one of the uh the letters on his typewriter is uh missing and stuff like that yeah that's a good one so hannah i did see the film version of the shining the only horror movie i've ever i've ever seen assuming uh -huh. you don't count yeah i don't count young frankenstein that'd <laughs> be normal that'd be normal although what's really kind of funny is that um, the the set of Young Frankenstein? They said was the same set that they used for the original Frankenstein movie in 1932. Wow. I did not know that. Wow. I know that's what I read. Maybe it's not. Maybe maybe it's just a recreation. Hmm. Funny movie. Um. So maybe that would be the perfect book to start with. The Shining. Yeah. That would be that would be a good one. Sure. Mm. Aha, Young Frankenstein is a classic. We discussed that on my Desert Island Flex. Oh yeah, with Sean D. Mm. Young, Young Frankenstein. Roll, roll, roll in the hay. Yeah. I need yeah. To, I need to rewatch that. I have not seen it in a very long mm. time. Is there a book of the movie The Birds? Um, there is a mm -hmm. short story by Daphne de Maurier ah. on The Birds. It's based on a short story. Mm. I think that's a great thing with Hitchcock is so many of his, probably all of his films pretty much are based off either interesting books or they, really, really he, good books. Did he do Rebecca as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think... I think he did, he did a version of Jamaica Inn as well. And um, Daphne du Maurier really didn't like it. And so she didn't really want him to make Rebecca. Uh, but eventually he got his way. But I think she had to, yeah, be sort of, I don't know, persuaded quite a lot. All right. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, Hannah. All right. Yeah, there is. Jesse's talking about the, the birds. Oh, cool, Gareth. That's a great idea to read the birds. Mm. And Booker says, ghost movies are fun, scary. Mm. They are. All right, gentlemen. We've been here for an hour and 45 minutes. Mm. So um, do we have anything else to discuss? Any last comments in the... The uh, the watchers that you want us to answer. I want to get that uh, book by uh, Godfrey Dunn. I want to check that out. That translation Godfrey, from Godfrey German. Ben. Which book? Is it this one. Oh, the Godfrey Godfrey Ben. Godfrey ben the oh, poetry. That ben. Ben. Yeah. Impromptu's. 
Yeah, translated by Michael Hoffman. That is a name I I know. Um, translate. He he's a very famous mm. translator from German. Yeah, I think he did um, Alone in Berlin. He translated that, and he's probably translated a lot more. Alone in Berlin. Yeah, it's uh, about a um, sort of resi resistance in Berlin during the Second World War. Every man dies alone. Is that the same? No, no, I, oh yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, there's an alternate title. Yeah. Yes. Um, just to clarify, Young Frankenstein was one of Nick's choices of his favorite films. Have a great day or evening. Well, goodbye, Nicole. That is right. I would love to do The Shining. If we do that book, vote yes. <laughs> well, Pat, you're in the group. You you can pick one book for our group to do. Now, the only rule is we can't do two Stephen King books in our group. I know Randy was thinking of picking Salem's Lot, mm -hmm. but he may pick uh, House, the next the House Next Door. So maybe. You know, everyone gets a choice. Yep, Nick Tube from another Nick from another booktube channel. Mm -hmm. Glad I caught the end. Yep, well, glad you can show up. That's okay, fine. everyone. Um, it's uh, five forty-five, and I'm sure upstairs I have a couple hungry. <laughs> They're gonna yeah, yeah. I'm going to lunch. What? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have tacos. Okay. Lunch. Sounds good. Time for me. And, and it's a uh, dinner time it's for you, Darren. Are you done? Are you, are you no, bed? it's it, bedtime for me now. It's quarter to eleven over here. Oh, you got to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. All right. We we should definitely let you go to bed. <laughs> yeah. All <laughs> right, Garrison. Great guy, Chad. Great having you on, Aaron, for the second time. Yeah. Thanks, guys. It was fun. And thank you for everyone in the chat room for making this happen and giving us great things to talk about. Goodbye, yeah, everyone. Always. Take care.